Just imagine being linked to a source of information, to a global internet adventure. Just imagine clarity in a world of chaos. Now, there's a new television network, ZDTV, your home for entertainment, explaining the power of computers and the internet, creating a world of possibilities. ZDTV, amaze yourself. an email from John who wants to know if there are any free programs to repartition the first 400 megabytes of his hard drive. Don't install Linux, I'd be guessing. That's what he wants to do. Now, first of all, let's talk about partitioning. What is partitioning? Second. Partitioning is taking your physical drive, like your this. hard drive like that, and then breaking it into logical drives, which are uh, like... It thinks it has four different systems yeah. or so however many drives. Without partitioning, this is my C drive without partitioning. And what I'm going to do is run partitioning software that's going to say, okay, this track here, this is going to be the C drive. This track here is going to be the D drive. And I can divide it farther and farther. You can't really see that. There you go. Um, and so there I have it. This is your inexpensive partitioning software, just a little Sharpie marker and uh, no. <laughs> and that's your logical partition. That's your meaning logic you have your physical drive and then there's something logical in there. Uh, right. What's another word for that? Well, it's just Give another, drive. another uh, drive. And, and actually, uh, people do this for a number of reasons. There's organizational benefits. If you're stuck in Windows, uh, you can use this to uh, eliminate fragmentation and make yourself a little bit more efficient. In fact, we have an article on the website about how I recommend you partition a larger drive with Windows. Um, used to be necessary because big drives Windows couldn't handle, but now it can't handle the big drives. And still people partition just for efficiency. But it's really great if you're going to run more than one operating system. For right. instance, at home, I have a drive uh, that's partitioned into a number of partitions, one for uh, Windows, one for Linux, one for the BOS, and they all coexist on the same drive as if they're on separate drives. Okay. And that works really nicely. But then they're on their own drive that they can refer to without getting confused. Yeah, the other to, drives. to them, as far as they're concerned, they're on, they're on their own drive. Now, we uh, recommend, we strongly recommend that you spend the money on a commercial partitioning program. In fact, we strongly recommend, we do it all the time, and I'm going to do it again, Partition Magic from PowerQuest. This is, uh, 4.0 is the current version, and I tell you, this program just gets better and better and better. Uh, it now has a Windows interface, which really makes it easy to understand what's happening. We're going to launch Partition Magic right now. We have two drives on this machine. This is our C drive, mm -hmm. and then we have a, a, a D drive. There's two drives. You can see this is the Linux partition right here. This is an unused partition, free space, 894 megabytes. Now, I can use this to do exactly what you wanted to do. In fact, let's do it over here on the C drive, because this is the case where we have... Uh, a four gig partition here, and we've only used 485 megabytes of it. I want to make it smaller, so I want to click resize, and I'm going to say I want to make 400 megabytes at the front to use for um, Linux. So it's like drawing another line on with the sharpie. There you go, and I'm going to actually let's make it a, let's make it a, oh, let's make it three gigs, okay? And there you go. Now what I'll do is I will run. The, I will. I haven't yet applied this. When I click apply, it will then go out into a DOS and do the actual resizing of this. And that takes some time, so I'm not going to do it right now. But this is, and then you can, by the way, you can create this. You can say, I'm going to make this be a Linux partition uh, or whatever you want. I just made a 400 megabyte Linux partition right there. In fact, we'll make this the swap partition. You probably want to create a 128 megabyte or 127 megabyte swap partition. Now, Linux comes with software that will do this roughly. Uh, uh, if you're using Red Hat, I think you said it was using Red Hat. Yeah. Uh, in the DOS utils directory, there's a program called FIPS. And that will um, shrink a partition if there's free space in it. Now, there has to be free space. So what we recommend you do is run scan disk on your hard drive first, defrag it so it moves all of the content up to the front, mm -hmm. and then FIPS will be able to shrink that down. Now, let's talk for a minute about FDisk and Druid. Now, right. FDisk, is FDisk always a destructive partitioning scheme? FDisk, which is the partitioner that comes with DOS and Windows, is destructive. Which means that you have to format the drives that you're partitioning when yeah, you're using it. Yeah, after you've partitioned it, you've lost all your data, basically. Right. You partition, then format. That ain't so good if you've got stuff on the drive you want to keep. Same thing with the drive partitioners that come with, uh, with uh, Linux, Druid, and uh, it has an FDisk as well. Those are destructive partitioners. Partition Magic is not. It will allow you to resize, move, reorganize without destroying any data, and that's really nice. And that's key. That's one of the reasons that it costs some money. You have the added functionality of being able to keep all of your data. But wait, the screensavers weren't content no. to stop with what we've just shown you. Oh, yes, we showed you a, a partition magic, which you can get now for $40 with rebate. We showed you free FIPS, which comes with Linux, but we found a really neato 
free partitioner from a guy named Ranish, R-A-N-I-S-H. He's a computer science student in France. Is he French? No, he's not French. I can't he's remember from where somewhere. he's from. But we don't know where. And we found it on the web, and we have a link on our website to his web page. Now, I'm restarting the machine in DOS, because what you do is you, are, you install this, right? You yes. download it, and, you, and you, what do you do? You, make you, have it? To, you have to make a boot floppy okay. that it can work off of. And, then, uh, and that makes sense, actually, if you think about it, because you don't want to be using the hard drive right, when you're partitioning. Right, because you're altering the partition of your existing hard drive, so you want to operate from somewhere else. Now, we haven't used this yet. I'm really nervous about using this, only because... Well, I've got the commercial package, and I don't want to spend the money. Uh, I mean, I don't want to take the chance of ruining my hard drive. However, I just say I'm very impressed by the user interface. This looks like a good commercial package. You can see here's disk one, the C disk, and this is uh, this is I'm going to switch disks over to uh, um, disk disk two, and you can see the partitions that we were talking about there. It's not quite as graphical. Here's the extended partition. It allows you to do many things. It has a boot manager in it. I think this is actually looks like a pretty oops I closed it looks like a pretty impressive program. Now actually on their website by the way they have come out with a recent beta 2. Point, version 2.38. Yeah. This is know. not the beta. You would go to 2.38. This is the stable version 2.37. Yeah. You would go to 2.38 if you want to partition a drive larger than 8 gigabytes. Uh, and it has additional features. Um, but I have to say for free this is pretty impressive. Now, doing this kind of utility is non-trivial, and you're trusting this programmer quite a bit, so before you use it, I'd back it up, and then you notice we haven't been courourageous enough. Maybe we will. Uh, I'll, 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 t I'll do it on a drive that I don't mind if I lose the data, I and I'll say, let you know. can we be safe first and yeah. back it up? It looks good, though. I mean, it does all the things you'd want to do. It saves your master boot record to a file, so you can restore it later. That's very important. It'll verify the disk surface. You can hide partitions, make partitions active. It is, his intention is to, to make something that does everything partition magic does, and then some. It does some non-standard stuff, too. Very impressive program. Uh, you'll find a link to that on our website. It's users.intercom. Slash Tilda Ranish. Slash Tilda Ranish. Slash Just go to the part. website. There it is right there. There it is. <laughs> yeah, you Check out his down. homepage, though. Ranish is pretty cool. He's a CIS student. He's got a lot of cool stuff going on. He's also, a lot utility. of good information on partitioning. Mm -hmm. If you want to read up on partitioning, I, I recommend that. And I do uh, see a lot of people in the news groups recommend this package. So I, I have a feeling this is probably safe and reliable. But okay. you're taking your chances. Just, we don't want to be blamed if well, it goes wrong. you know, don't, don't come crying to us. <laughs> you kill your machine there. Why are we chicken or what? Yeah. Well, Ben's on the ZDTV3Com Netcam Network from Shreveport, Louisiana. Hi, Ben. How Hi, you ben. doing? Hey, Kate. Hey, Kalu. How you doing? I'm um, glad to see Kate's back. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's nice to, to have her back. back. Oh, yeah. I had Mardi Gras off, you know. Oh, is that what you were doing? <laughs> yeah. Now I understand. She was partying. Well, so what can we do for you, Ben? Okay, well, I have a tough question for y'all. Uh-oh. How can you put more than four IDE ports on a computer? Why, well, by getting an IDE card. An IDE card? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Where can he get an IDE card? Anywhere. Which, Promise which, makes them. A lot of companies make them. They're they're basically uh, they're basically uh, cards, that, just like a serial card or any other card that add uh, more uh, ports to your uh, you know your IDE. Are they expensive? Setup. No, they're cheap. In fact, I, if you think about it, IDE is, is, a, is actually a very cheap technology because all the electronics are on the drive. Integrated drive electronics, that's what it stands for. So the card itself is just a few interface chips. It's very simple. shouldn't cost you more than $50. Okay. That's all right. right. Okay. PCI or ISA? PCI. All right. Or ISA. Okay. Do you have one they'll recommend? Uh, you know, I haven't used any of them. A lot of people use the Promise Technology one. Um, you know what I would do before buying is uh, go to the news groups and just look at these look at what people have problems with and see what kinds of problems you know maybe like like what? if you're gonna well if you're gonna use linux for instance you might have trouble with with a non-standard operating system things like that but but i i think basically you're just gonna be fine as long okay. as you're in plug and play you should be cool yeah all right okay okay, okay. ben okay thank you thanks for calling in okay all right yo yo chat room sit up straight man leo's heading your way yeah, and up baby. next you ever wonder what the real differences are between shareware and commercial applications andre leach is here to referee shareware versus commercial software when the screensavers continue welcome back to the celebrity grill we're here with international superstar and host of internet tonight michaela Pereira. international superstar dash yes international superstar. where'd you get that from well, aren't you from Canada? Yes. That's pretty international. How about a North American superstar? Can we come Ooh. to a happy medium there? Yeah, I like that better. North American. See? It's sort of, it gets very continental. That's right, and I still have to work on the Eastern Hemisphere. Can I clarify something else here? Go for it. 
Do you vaguely remember a pantyhose comment that was made I on one do, of our shows? I do, I do. You said that I wear pantyhose. No. See, I need no? to clear this up. That okay. was Harriet. It was Harriet? I mean, I know he's my partner and all, and I know I should go to bat for him, but frankly, it was him. I knew it was him. Did you? I knew See? you were too nice to say anything like See? that. I'm glad to know that my reputation is getting around. Yeah. My good well, reputation. So, Michaela Pereira, thanks for being our guest on The Celebrity Grill. My pleasure, Dash. And for you folks out there, join us next time on The Celebrity Grill.